In this video, I will be discussing the LED nightlight circuit with the photoresistor. This circuit uses one MPN transistor, two resistors, an LED, and a photoresistor. The main feature of the circuit is that when the photoresistor is not exposed to light, the LED is on. Conversely, when the photoresistor is exposed to light, then the LED is off. Let's take a quick look at the photoresistor used in this video. Here's a look at a table pulled from the manufacturer's data sheet. The photoresistor used is the GM5539. Two values that we want to take a look at are the dark resistance or the resistance of the photoresistor when it is not exposed to light and the light resistance at 10 lux. The dark resistance is simple. When there is no light on the photoresistor, its resistance value is equivalent to 5 mega ohms. The light resistance value at 10 lux is between 50 and 100 kilo ohms. To put 10 lux into perspective, let's take a look at this Wikipedia table. It is somewhere in between the dark limit of a twilight sky and the lighting of an Australian living room in 1998. The spectral response peak is the same for this family of photoresistors. Its value is 540 nanometers. This means that the behavior of the photoresistor will change most greatly when exposed to wavelengths of light of 540 nanometers. In the visible spectrum, this is shades of green. For typical applications, we don't have to concern ourselves too much with this spectral peak. The reason why we are not that concerned is because white light contains all the colors found in the frequency spectrum. Now, let's take some resistance measurements given various lighting conditions. In this first measurement, it's just a desk light, and we see that the value is 15.34 kilo ohms. When we cover the photoresistor, we see that we get a value of 4.25 mega ohms. This is relatively close to the dark resistance specified on the data sheet. In this case, we did not fully shield the photoresistor from light, so we did not achieve the 5 mega ohms. For the next measurement, we'll expose the photoresistor to more light. We see that when it is exposed to a flashlight, its resistance drops to about 2.27 kilo ohms. We will see later in the video that this photoresistor can drop to as low as a few hundred ohms given its light exposure. The last two examples were to give us an idea of two extreme values, where the photoresistor was pretty much covered and when the photoresistor was exposed directly to a flashlight. The last clip is when we vary the light more subtly, for example if a shadow passes by. This gives us resistance values closer to the 10 lux value specified on the data sheet. Let's take a look at how we can use this information to design our nightlight circuit. The function of the circuit is for the LED to be on when there is no light on the photoresistor and the LED to be off when there is light on the photoresistor. In terms of the circuit, that's equivalent to saying when there is light on the photoresistor, there is a low resistance. And when there is not light on the photoresistor, there's high resistance. Let's take a look at how these varying resistances will affect the behavior of this circuit. The LED used in the design of this circuit is a large green LED. The forward bias voltage of the large LED is 2.5 volts. So in LT Spice, I connected four series LEDs which contribute 0.65 volts each, giving us a total of 2.6 volts, pretty close to the 2.5. First, we can take a look at the input stage. R1 is a static resistor which has a value of 390 kilo ohms. R2 is 15K which represents the photoresistor when there is just the desk light shining on it. When the photoresistor equals 15K, the LED is off. To verify the result of the simulation, I measured the voltage across R1. We get 8.65 volts matching our simulated results. This also puts us in the 300 millivolt range across the photoresistor, or R2 
in our simulation. We know that the LED is off because the transistor is in the off mode. This is because the voltage across R2 is less than 0.65 volts, or the turn on voltage of the transistor. The voltage across R2 is currently 333 millivolts, or 0.333 volts. It should also be noted that the current going through R1 and R2 are just about equal. This reminds us that there is very little input current going into the base of the transistor. We see that we are getting 22 microamps. Here is R1's current being measured in the circuit. Let's move on and take a look at the case where the lights are off and the LED is on. For the simulation, we'll set the value of R2 to 4.5 mega ohms. Because the LED is on, we see that the voltage across R2 is equal to the transistor's turn on voltage. Also, the voltage across R1 has decreased relative to the last simulation. Now, let's take a look at the actual circuit's voltage. We see we get pretty close to the voltage across R1. We measured 8.41 volts. It was difficult to fully shield the photoresistor, but we got pretty close. Taking a look at the currents through R1 and R2, we see that they are not close to being equal. If we take a look at the current plots, we see R1 is actually just about equal to the base current, and the current going through R2, or the photoresistor, is very small. Here is the current being measured going into R1. Note that the current going through R1 does change, but not very drastically, even though the LED is now on. The next clip shows the current going through the photoresistor as it transitions from being exposed to light to being covered. We see that the current going through the photodiode varies drastically. R1 in this circuit acts as a crude current source. Before moving on to talk about the output stage, we'll take a quick look at when the photoresistor is directly exposed to the flashlight. The value of the photoresistor when it's directly exposed to the flashlight is very low. Let's take a quick look at the simulation. We see that the voltage across R1 is very close to the supply voltage. When we measure the actual circuit, we see a similar result, which matches the simulation. Let's move on to talk about the output stage of this nightlight circuit. Let's take a look at the output when the photoresistor is exposed to the desk light. Reviewing R3, we see that the voltage across it is about 29 microvolts. The current is about 4.25 nanoamps. The forward bias voltage of the diode is about 1.34 volts, not enough to illuminate it. And the voltage across the collector emitter junction is about 7.66 volts. Let's compare simulations when the LED is on. We see that the voltage across R3 is 6.3 volts. The current going through it is 928 microamps. The forward bias voltage of the LEDs is 2.61 volts. And the voltage across the collector emitter junction is 79 millivolts. Here's the measured collector current or the current going through R3 measured in the actual circuit. The photoresistor is not fully covered, but we still produce amount of collector current that approaches the simulated value. This clip shows the voltage of the output stage of the nightlight circuit. The larger multimeter displays the voltage across the collector emitter junction. The smaller multimeter has the voltage across R3 and the LED. Note that when the LED is off, the majority of the voltage is across the collector emitter junction. When the LED is on, the majority of the voltage is across the resistor and the LED. When the LED is fully biased, it has a 2.5 voltage drop. Here is the LED voltage drop measured in the circuit. The last clip shows why the photoresistor is critical to the nightlight circuit. 
if we remove the photoresistor, we just continuously bias the LED. Here it is with the photoresistor reconnected to the circuit. Thanks for watching, and let me know what you think about the video in the comment section.